in this uh, second step, we are gonna activate TraceX. For the ones who do not know, Azure Atos TraceX is a Microsoft host base analysis tool that provides developers with a graphical view of real system events and enables them to visualize, better understand the behavior of the real-time system. So with Azure Atos TraceX, developers can see clearly the occurrence of system events like interrupt and context switches that occur out of view of a standard debugging tool. So the most important thing is this slide is to understand that we are going to see this uh, behavioral view of, of our system uh, using an external tool which uh, belongs to Microsoft and it's called a TraceX. Uh, you should uh, have uh, already installed it and uh, as it was present in the installation pack that we provided. Another important feature that maybe can anticipate some of the question is related to the fact that TraceX allows a post-mortem analysis. So it means that it's an offline analysis of uh, the sequence uh, that is running on our microcontroller. So here you have the steps needed to make TradeX work. Uh, you need to activate the feature in firmware. We will allocate the memory. Uh, it will be your uh, SRAM memory. We then need to execute the firmware to fill in uh, the trace in the memory. And then basically we save the content into a file with a specific ex extension we are going to see and we will use the TraceX application on your PC to display the results. Now we are going to see all of this in practice. So I will come back to our code, which was in running mode, and um, we go out from debug. So we click on the red square and we terminate the debug section. Now we should be back to our .ioc file, so the configurator uh, for, for our H7. We now need to go to software pack, select component, and we need to activate TraceX support. We activate TraceX support, we flag the related line and we click OK to validate. We go to software pack, ST micro, Xcube is RTOS H7 2.0.0. And you see there is a new tab called a trace that we enable right now. We have to go into that and enable the event trace. You see that there is this time source. This time source is uh, an ARM core uh, register. It's the DWT register precisely, so data watch point and uh, trace unit from which we are going to take the timestamp source that we'll use for the tracing. At this stage, we only need now to generate code so another way to generate code is to click on this yellow wheel and wait for a few seconds until the code is uh, regenerated. Okay, so as you saw from uh, the part one, the entry point is upthread.c and we are gonna work mainly on uh, on that for the TraceX enabling part. We are now at slide number 54 of the presentation that you got. And the first thing uh, we have to do is to allocate a specific section in SRAM to save our tracing buffer. So we uh, have to go to our linker file, which is stm 42 h723zgtxflash.ld. You see that here we specify the different memory areas of the microcontroller. We are going to put a dedicated section in RAM D1 for the trace buffer. So at line 
one to two, around line one to two. So after uh, flash definition, we define a new section. We can cut and paste from the slide or from a lot or follow along from the sheet sheet. And we define, we basically place a section to AXI SRAM. So now the trace buffer location will be known and location will be the starting address of RAM D1, which you see here is two, four and uh, six zeros, okay? So uh, now what you can do is close the flash.ld and save the file. Perfect, so now you can go back to your app thread.c, which uh, as I promise is the main file that we are gonna work on for the whole morning. Uh, and we basically have to uh, define the buffer used for trace and put the buffer to a specific RAM section. And this is exactly what we are gonna do. So right after the definition of the thread pointer in the section use code, uh, begin PV between uh, use code begin and use code and PV. We are gonna define the trace buffer size. Uh, the trace buffer here is calculating is calculated knowing the TX trace header, the TX trace object entry, and the TX trace buffer entry. Then we are gonna basically define the trace buffer which is an array of length uh, 64k, and we put them in the section we have just defined before. Now we have to enable the trace, and to enable the trace, we move to up thread init function, and uh, right after tx thread create, in section user code begin up thread x init, we are now gonna add the TX trace enable. So here we have defined the trace X enable. This is our trace buffer. This is the buffer size, 64K. And this is 30 is the uh, amount of trace objects in the buffer. So we are actually going to use just four rows in total. Uh, which are uh, the thread, the scheduler, and the idle task, uh, but you may want to, to see more. So we, allo we allocate up to 30 trace objects for this uh, instance. Okay, so this is all we have to do before building and uh, flashing our project. So at first we are gonna click on build, so on the hammer, and we compile the project. This may take uh, some time. We click on run debug. OK, so now we are in debug mode. And uh, in order to see the trace buffer fillet, we need to open the memory view. So for opening the memory view, you should have this uh, cylinder picture right above the ThreadX list in your uh, uh, debug perspective. Or alternatively, you can enable it from window show view memory. As a first thing, we need to add a memory monitor for the variable that we have just defined, which is tracex underscore buffer and we click OK. OK, you see it's correctly and we no surprise is positioned at the beginning of the SRAM, XE SRAM, at the same address that we defined initially. Now we have to fill this uh, buffer with relevant information, so it's very important to remember that we need to run the project and see the LED blinking for a certain time period before suspending it. So, in fact, we see that the value in the memory monitor are changing, so it means that the buffer has been correctly filled with the data that uh, we are going to use as an input for the trace X. So now we have some data here. 
we just need to click on uh, export button, which is this arrow pointing on the top of your screen. You see you should have row binary format. The start address should be untouched. You should put the length 64K, which is the one we defined at the beginning. Select uh, again row binary and uh, select uh, directory in which you want to save the file. The important thing is to give the file an extension .trx, otherwise you cannot open it with tracex, and uh, give it a name, okay? I call it uh, log number 20, okay? Because I have many in that folder, and I click on okay. Good. Now we, we are going to move forward and uh, for a few minutes we are going to use uh, the TraceX application. So you should have TraceX installed and uh, please open it. OK, so. Should have a blank view like this one. You shall click on open file. Open file is this folder with the error that goes into it. And you're going to click on your log. For me, it's log 2.0 to differentiate from previous ones. OK, so. It's working exactly as expected. It could pop up an error mentioning error opening custom event file. You can just click OK and move forward. So we are now seeing something very interesting that I'm going to explain. So. This is basically the sequential view mode. This is actually the default mode, and in this mode, events are shown immediately uh, following each other. So regardless of the elapsed time between them. It basically shows the event from the beginning to the end, and it definitely gives you a good overview of what is happening in the system independently from the time that uh, has elapsed. So. It's definitely very interesting uh, just to understand how our application is behaving. You see that we are running the thread. And when the thread is asleep, the control passes to the, the scheduler and uh, the system goes in idle mode and you see the interrupt line. The interrupt line is actually the timestamp. So it's it's actually the, the tick we, we selected at the beginning. You see here. There again, this is not timestamp, it's just a sequential view of what is happening inside the system. Another important thing I suggest you to look at is view ThreadX legend. If you click on view ThreadX legend, you got the legend to be able to understand uh, what of uh, all of these letters inside the block meaning. For example, IS is thread suspended, IR is trade resum. R is thread running, which are the, the, the most common you, you will see in, uh, in our demo. There are uh, many more. TZ is thread sleep. OK, so this is definitely not all that we wanted to see because we would like to see how these events are behaving into the time domain. And to do this, we use the time view. So please click on time view tab. And the first thing we need to do is to select the right scale. So a good number is 550. You can choose another number, but basically this 550 gives us a pretty good scale. So it means that every microsecond is actually 500 of uh, 550 is made of 550 blocks inside the inside the viewer so it, it giving us the right granularity to see the events we want to to see first thing you notice is that uh, actually our thread is running for a super short time you see we are quite all the time in idle task actually you couldn't see quite anything in uh, in my thread you have to zoom a lot. To zoom a lot, you have to select a vertical line and zoom. You see that actually, in fact, we are executing, but we stay in the thread for just a few microseconds. This is expected, in fact, because uh, our thread actually 
is really running only during GPIO talk doll and during sleep the scheduler passes the control to the idle task. So this is uh, completely expected that we see the GPIO toggle only for a few microseconds. OK, so let's change a little bit the behavior and uh, let's try to come back to our upthread.c to see how we can uh, spend more time to see the thread running for more time without uh, passing immediately the control to the uh, scheduler and the idle task. So a good way to do this is try to run some operation inside the thread entry. So in order to simulate some uh, activity inside uh, the thread entry, uh, we are going to use a hell delay. So maybe some of you uh, would like to write us in the chat, which is the difference that exists between hell delay and uh, TX thread sleep. OK, just to do a small checkpoint to see if we are all uh, aligned with this. So in the meantime, I'm going to write hell underscore delay. And then to auto compile, I'm going to click uh, control space. And I'm going to put 500 here and semicolon. In this case, you are expected to have something like this. So uh, the hull delay running for 500 milliseconds and the sleep running for 200 milliseconds. Uh, let's see if this is the exactly what we were expecting. So we can uh, launch the debug session. OK, so we should actually make exactly the same thing we, we did before. So we should run, run the, the code, break after a few seconds, go back to memory monitor and click. This time you have already the trace buffer selected and you click on X integer. And as expected, you see that the buffer is filled with some value that now we are going to analyze. So again, please click on export. Everything should be set exactly as before. So you should have a row binary length of 64K and uh, please give it another name. I'm going to call it log21. and click OK. Now, if you have TraceX open again, you have to click here on the open file, select your new file. In the sequential view, there is no much difference as expected. But actually, if you go in the time view and you zoom out a little bit, OK? You see that it's behaving as expected. So we stay. The thread is running basically for you see here. 500 milliseconds. And uh, we stay in the idle thread while our main thread is sleeping, which is 200 milliseconds. So is exactly behaving in this step and we have seen how to change the behavior and uh, and see basically the thread properly running. There is another nice view that you can use in TradeSex, which is execution profile. If you click to view execution profile, you can see that in percentage, the time is split between 75% of my thread running and 25% of idle. So for a, a total, uh, let's say, typical profile of uh, 700, a typical cycle of 700 milliseconds, we spend uh, 500 milliseconds with the thread running and 200 milliseconds in idle. 